Supply and demand trading has become one of the most popular methods of trading most Forex pairs today. And from combing through thousands upon thousands of your comments, it's the thing that you guys wanna see the most. So in today's video, I'm gonna help you guys understand supply and demand, how to find it, when to enter, and when to take profit. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name's Artie, and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable on a consistent basis. I have a feeling that this is gonna be a long video, so let's just get right into the charts. Okay, so the first thing you guys have to understand when looking at supply and demand is the simple fact that retail day traders cannot move the markets. The Forex markets have a daily volume of 6.6 .6 trillion dollars. That 6.6 .6 trillion dollars is allocated probably to about 80% central banks across the entire world moving money, whether it's from GBP to USD, whether it's from Euro to JPY, they are making transactions depending on the influx of currency that they get to the currency that they would like to get. And they always want to get the best price. So they will hold out manipulation manipulating the market to the point where they want to get in on their big positions and then get in. And at that point, that's when you see the massive spikes in the opposite direction. Again, daily volume of $6.6 .6 trillion. The banks move the market, retail traders do not. So the most logical thing for you guys to do is to trade like the banks. So the first thing that I want you guys to understand when looking at the charts, I have Euro USD right here. It is one of the most commonly traded Forex pairs. And I wanna show you what it looks like when a swift, sharp move happens. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this. This V shape is what you wanna look for. These V shapes only happen when banks get into the market. No amount of retail day traders can make price move like this ever. So let's just say, for example, you can't see any of this price action right here. You can only see this one move. If you look left, you will see right here. This right here, people like to use as like the support zone, right? And if it breaks below a support zone, people normally get in for a sell order. That looks like this. Smart people keep a stop loss. Dumb people, however, get liquidated. They don't have a stop loss. So if the retail trader gets into a short position right here and it quickly reverses on them, they are stuck in that position until the price pulls back to it and they can get out at a break even or they get margin called way up there. So let's just say they didn't have a stop loss and waited for the price to come back to that area so they can break even. They got into a sell position. When a sell position is closed, it is a buy order. So their buy orders moved from their original to break even, meaning that there are a ton of buy orders here for the people that were stuck in the trade. Buy orders living right here. Then there are sell orders from the retail trader just below that because it broke the previous support, so it must be going down. If you are a bank and you want to buy a ton of something, you have to look for a ton of sellers. Not only that, in previous price action, Looking at this area and people taking long positions here, trying to target this, their stop loss is going to be below that area that we saw to the left right here. So what is a stop loss of a buy order? That's right, more sell orders. So not only are there retail trader buy orders here, there are two massive chunks of retail trader sell orders here, which is completely primed for the massive amount of liquidity that the banks are gonna put in their buy orders. And you see a massively sharp, straight up movement like a mother. Retail traders cannot move the market like this. Only big banks can. Maybe retail can do something like this. Maybe like a little boop, but not these colossal 
big ass candles. Now I wanted to show you that example specifically because it is just the perfect cascading storm of sell orders and buy orders at the right location primed for banks victory. But what you also have to understand is that the daily volume is 6.6 .6 trillion dollars. So what I want you guys to focus on is the smaller moves because banks still make smaller moves as well as their massive moves like that. Think about those supply and demand zones as diving boards. There are two different types that banks will trade off of. You have the wide platform ones and you have the narrow little flimsy dongle ones. That's depicted right here with a small base and a sharp move. Then another one right here with a single candle sharp move. Again, this is a very sharp move. This is more than a 45 degree angle downwards. So if your chart looks like this, when you get on and do your analysis, you should be drawing up a long rectangular box across this zone and then patiently waiting for the banks to come back to that zone and use it as their diving board to sell off the market. As the price comes back up to that zone and we get this sharp one or two candle rejection in the opposite direction, that right there is your short position. Your stop loss is gonna be above the peak, just barely, just above the peak of that, maybe two or three pips. And your target is simply gonna be look left and where the most price has crossed right there. You're looking at 35 to 40 pips on these moves on a 30 minute time frame. These moves happen quickly and it usually is in one direction the entire time. Sometimes the price continues and if you wanna leave a runner, close 90% of your position, but I usually advocate that you just close 100% of your position at your take profit and you look for your next trade. And if you guys are paying attention, you're also noticing right here, this small base consolidation area with a massively sharp move off of it. So when price reaches that again, and we get these massive candles off of it, you can trade this zone, again, just a few pips off of that, up to where you think the banks are gonna do their big sell off. Making money with the banks, whether the price is going up or whether the price is going down. Again, right here, single candle, super sharp move off of it. Banks push it back up, massive drop down 40 pips within 30 minutes. Why does this happen multiple times? Because when banks have that much liquidity to move, they will do it in smaller chunks. Small chunk one, small chunk two, that one was actually massive. And they will also break it up into smaller chunks, which is why the small bases are important, not the long periods of consolidation. <laughs> Bless me, thank you. But short bases, where they fill in a small chunk of their position, another small chunk, and then they take the market in the opposite direction. Please don't ask me if this works for crypto. We are looking at the Forex markets, a $6.6 .6 trillion daily volume Forex market not crypto. Now, here's the last example that I'm going to show you. This is a long position. Banks get in a little bit right there. Banks get in a little bit more right there. And then the people that went long right here with their stop losses right here, they take advantage of that. So there are sell orders right here, meaning the buy orders are primed, ready to go. Banks get in with the sharp movement, pulls it up, gets enough people stuck and or liquidated, brings the price back down into that zone for one last massive rally off of that, and the price shoots up. So either banks build up their position slowly, rip the price up, bring it back down one more time, and then let it take off. This is why current price action is king. Banks are moving money. You either trade with the banks or they are the ones that take your money. This is a constant battle between the retail day trader and the banks. So start looking for the signals that the banks are dropping for you, the little breadcrumbs. Pick up the scent of which direction they're gonna go in and go with them. If the price is moving against you very, very sharply, please get the fuck out of your position. You're getting screwed over by the banks. Not screwed over, you fell for their trap. Admit your mistake, get out of your position, prevent yourself from having a massive loss. Also keep in mind that those trades that have the base, the small base where there are multiple positions that the banks got in at, that is a much stronger move 
than the quick single candle one, because right there is where the traders are trapped. More trapped traders means a longer, bigger move off of it. So if you guys wanna learn more about day trading and all the different strategies that I teach on this channel, check out my intermediate playlist right here. And if you guys got some value out of this video and you like the way that I teach, you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel by clicking this button right here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.